everyone has ancestors who knew her or claim they knew, knew her or um, you know employed her or her husband or you know I mean there's just such a range of stories here. She had what uh, prenatal or not prenatal but depression when she had the child uh, and even today that worries a lot of people and so she just took herself off and as we all believed it was only straight down to the lake uh, and drowned herself there. Can you just give me your full name and your age? Kenneth Desmond Smith, 88. Lovely, okay. Mm. So Ken, um, I'm told that you um, used to tie up your horse in the yard where Bridget Foster lived. Just wondering if you can tell us a little bit about that. Well, as I started to say, there were 14 of us three mile out of town. I used to ride a pony into school and where are you going to put it? Bricky Foster's, aren't you? So yes, I, I saw Bricky and uh, to me then he was still an old man. Uh, but he said yes, no worries at all. And I suppose for two years I left it in his backyard. Pick it up after school and ride home. So when you say, um, you know, the obvious place was Ricky Foster's yard, why was that? Why was that the obvious place? Well, probably only 600 yards from school. Uh, I'd already come in three mile and it was handy and it was a small, probably a quarter, in, a quarter acre block that suited somewhere to leave the pony. Okay, and did, were other kids leaving their horses there as well? No, 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 no. Just you. So did you personally speak to Bricky Foster? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, periodically. Uh, I do not remember the year that his Kate Kelly died. She wasn't there while I was leaving the pony. Uh, I guess I was 10 and 11 year old when I did that, but she was, had gone, passed on before that. Yeah. Yeah. So what year are we talking about when you're 10 and 11? Oh, uh, well, go, go back, mm, well, 10, that's 34, 1934, 1935, in that period. And what did he look like? Have you got any memory of what he looked like? Yes, I do. But uh, as I said, to me then, I was only young, he was an old man. But he, he possibly was not an old man, but to me he appeared to be. But he lived there on his own. Um, as far as I do not recall, well, I probably wasn't interested uh, whether he got a pension, whether there was a pension in those days, but he certainly didn't work. So how he lived, I don't know. As a bachelor, little old weatherboard place, and uh, he seemed quite okay. Okay, so some people say he was known to be a bad-tempered old bugger. Did you have any sense of that? No, no, I didn't actually. But then I could leave the horse there, pick it up of an afternoon, and I wouldn't even see him. So yes, no, I, I'm not sure whether he was that way or not, but he didn't show it to me. And um, um, what was the nature of the kinds of conversations you had with him? Oh, I don't really recall any at all. Um, it was just good morning or good day or something like that because half the time I wouldn't see him. I'd leave the horse, hang the bridle up in under the tree and just go off to school. 
So I didn't really have a lot of conversation with him. Okay. And at the time, were you aware, because by then, 1934, the Kelly legend was already very strong in Australia. Did you, did you have any, did anyone sort of tell you that he was the husband of Kate Kelly? Well, it was general knowledge, I think. Uh, and uh, my family had been down there. My grandfather settled down where we lived back in 87. So, yes, it was just common knowledge. Um, but, as I said, Kate Kelly had passed on before I was leaving the pony there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so what, what did people say? Do you recall at the time um, what, what people said about how Kate died or the nature of their relationship, Kate and Vicky Foster's relationship? No, except that she had, what, uh, prenatal, or well, not prenatal, but depression when she had the child. Uh, and even today that worries a lot of people. And so she just took herself off and as we all believed, it was only straight down to the lake uh, and drowned herself there. So you believe that she drowned herself? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there, and not down further as thought or, or saying okay. where she was. So where, 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 um, where on the map did you believe that she um, drowned? Well, probably just a few hundred yards below the bowling club. The lake then was only a meandering stream sometimes. Uh, it's since been dredged and all that sort of thing. So, yes, uh, it was possibly a time when uh, there was a fair amount of water in the lake, enough to drown herself anyway. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so it was common knowledge at the time that Ricky Foster's wife had drowned herself mm. in the lake. Is that how people yep. thought of it? Yes, it was, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, um, anything else you'd like to say about um, your encounters with Ricky Foster? Not really. I don't know whether he had brothers. There were two brothers lived in the other. Ricky lived here and he had two brothers lived there where the wool store is. Well, I, th I took them to be brothers anyway in a little old home there. Uh, and then you had another house, and then you had the uh, Matthias home, which ties up with the Chinese. Uh -huh. yeah. So, yes, uh, I wouldn't have had a lot of conversation with Bricky. Being that age group, mm. I'd probably dodge him more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. And uh, just, just, just so I get it down again, can you just, just, just say on a Forbes map, um, of today, where, where precisely were you tying up the pony? Because I might go down and try and film that spot as near as I can get. All right. Well, it's all buildings. Yeah. Um, Ricky was alongside. There was Matthias, a, a bare block, spare block, and then Ricky's. And then there was a laneway running right through. He was on the edge of that laneway. Now whether that mm -hmm. laneway has been taken up I think, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's been bought or whether it's been um, leased, I don't know but it's been taken up I'm sure. But it was a, just a little laneway ran down the side of Ricky's house. Okay, so which, which do you, have you got a sense of the number of the street that would have been Ricky's house? Well, no, I wouldn't know the number. But you, you have a, uh, what's the name there, the Band Hall. Band Hall. I think that still operates. It must nearly be where that Band Hall is today, isn't it? I thought it may have been alongside. There's another building, another business there. And, and the laneway, and then the, this business, and then the band hall, and then you have 
Mathias Sold Store. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I I think it'd be alongside the band hall. Oh, the, yeah, the band hall. Okay. So if you were facing the band hall, would it have been the left? On the side? left. On the left of the band hall, mm. if you're facing the band hall. Yeah, I okay. think I think so. Yeah. Okay. Because um, actually, all the information I've had so far is that just somewhere in Brown Street, that's where Kate Kelly lived. But this is a different. This is a different spot. This is Rankin Street. This is Rankin Street. So this is this is Bricky Foster probably. This is Brock. After Kate. Um, Probably after it, it's possible, but I would think that Bricky lived there for many years. Okay. A little, it was a little old low area, rambling place, and I would have thought that, well, to my knowledge, he lived there for years, but his brothers or cousins or whatever they were lived on the other corner. Okay, yeah. Did you get a sense that he drank a lot? Was he a drinker or...? No, I, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. He never, I can't say that I saw him drunk or anything like that. Mm. But then I probably wasn't interested anyway. Yeah, yeah. At yeah. that age. Yeah. Okay. So was the, was, was the, um, Kelly, was, was the fact that Kate Kelly had lived there um, a thing of note in the town or were people not that kind of into it? Oh, uh, well... In those days, you, you go back, everybody knew everybody. So I would think it would be a general knowledge. But once again, I was the age where there's many things I should have asked my father, but I didn't, did I? So, yes, it, it, you weren't interested at that age. That was Peter. <laughs> Peter the Pony. Peter the Pony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lovely. Okay, so any, anything else you'd like to say? Well, no, it's probably not the right time to. Where the plaque has been put on Kate Kelly, Kelly's death, is that China, Chinaman's... Chinaman's yeah. culvert. Yeah. Now that was always full of briar bushes around that. And that's where that person was killed, as was talking about. Okay. But I, I've been... No, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was crooked on the council or whoever. They put a plain pipe rail along that. And that was always a 4b6 hardwood post and another one and another one uh, and a 4b6 hardwood railing. It was a proper hardwood fencing. And somebody come along council probably and, and stuck a two inch bloom and uh, galvanised pipe on it. You mean on that little bridge? On that bridge. Oh, oh, yeah, if you're, if you're, um... Oh, yes, you're, we're, we're, I was fiddling, wasn't yeah. I? <laughs> so, so you reckon Chinaman's Bridge should have a wooden handrail? If you go, if, historical side of it, it should be, if it's going to be uh, put on note, it should have the, the timber railing, decking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so that's a historical accuracy. So well, I, I used to again ride a horse when I worked in town at 14, I'd ride a horse up onto North Hill and I'd go by the end of that and if I was walking I'd poke in underneath it mm -hmm. and what have you. And yes, it was a thing that I knew of. Mm. All right, they took the briar bushes out but they stick a, a blooming old galvanised pipe there mm -hmm. uh, and I was always crooked on that but not enough to get onto the powers of be and right say do something with it. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. That's Just one other thing that occurred to me, you know South Circle, um, where Kate Kelly was said to have broken in horses, do you, 
were that were horses still being broken in around that time when you were a kid in on that area? No, not that I know yeah. of. Yeah. Not that I know of. Uh, but it was back in the horse days. See, I, I drove horse teams and ploughs and things like that. Everything in those days was all horse. Uh, and I drove all those things with those implements. Mm. I was back in that era. Mm. So, yes, it is very likely mm. that, yes, horses were broken in there. There was down cutting that in half. There were two big lines of willow trees, one each side, and the Bitchman Road. And we walked that most days going home from school until they cut them all out. Uh, but you know that was back in those days when, oh yes, we don't need this. We'll do away with it. So yes, it, uh, it it has memories in those days. Like, as I said, my grandfather took up a two-acre block in 87. Ezra's grandfather took one up in 83. But we had the lake when it on running down between back of their place and where we used to walk home from school. So we knew one another to a degree then, or we knew of the Foos and we knew of the Smiths and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, and um, Grandfather Foo had a lot of geese. And of course they used to swim the lake and then going home from school, us fellas had built Billy out of them with stones. Seen them home. You don't, don't put that on. They might sue me. Uh, and my father used to say, if uh, if we were naughty, I'll send you up to Grandfather Fu. He'll fix you. Because <laughs> we were terrified of, of the Chinese in those days. And then you ended up marrying one. Then I finished up marrying one. Yeah. And that's nearly 63 years ago now. Um, Esme now. Mm -hmm. yeah? Lovely, thank you very much. She talks more than me. <laughs>